How can you create a space that fuels your inspiration? Creativity is about more than just having the right gear and software. It's about the space around us and how it influences our mood and emotions. The colors, the layout, the aesthetic, it all adds up to create a vibe that shapes our imagination and helps us bring ideas to life. Welcome to my home studio. This is where it all happens. And today I'm taking you guys on an exclusive tour to show you guys the gear I use and how it integrates into my workflow. This studio has been a work in progress for probably about the last five years. As a producer, I've always wanted my own space to kind of isolate myself in my own creative zone when I'm working. It started out with some tables that I actually bought from Ikea and a very low budget computer that I originally had. This is back when I actually had my studio in my bedroom. It was about two years ago that I actually moved into this new apartment and had a dedicated space. So that's where things kind of really picked up. I built my own acoustic panels, built my own bass traps, and then bought some acoustic treatment to just pad out the extra spots of the walls. And then also did my own custom lighting to really turn it into a space that felt comfortable and felt more like a studio. It really kind of allows me to change the vibe and change the atmosphere of the room to suit whatever mood I'm in or whatever emotion I want to be creating from. So let's jump straight into it and let me show you guys around the studio. So we obviously have to start with the heart of my setup, which is the screens. Now these bad boys are mounted on a dual monitor arm, which allows me to move both of the screens anywhere that I want. Now, why do I do that? Why do I have them set up this way? Having the mix console down here, right in front of me, makes it feel more like I'm in an analog studio with one of those actual mixing desks. Obviously, I don't move the bottom one that much. My mix console needs to stay put. You don't wanna, you know, you don't move your mix console, but the top screen, I move that forward and back. I can just basically reposition it any way I want. A lot of the time, if I'm editing on my laptop, doing some video editing, I'll pull the screen forward and angle it towards me so that I can do a bit of multitasking. It's not touchscreen, which would be really cool if I could actually touch the faders and actually move them, but I've got my controller here for that, so don't really need the touchscreen. I can be working in my mix console and then I can instantly just open up the piano roll view to change some of the MIDI for one of my instruments. I can move the notes around, do some editing that way, and I can just seamlessly do all of this without having to constantly flick between windows because no one likes flicking between windows. That's the worst thing ever. You do not want to be flicking between windows and I know that you know what I'm talking about. It lets me stay in the zone and stay in the flow of creating. Now moving on to my controllers, I have my MIDI keyboard here, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a basic MIDI keyboard, the Keystation 49. But I also have a couple of other things. So, this is my TB3 baseline synth. This is basically a recreation of that iconic acid bass sound, which I absolutely love. Then I also have this chaos pad over here. So this is an effects unit that has all kinds of effects built into it. Really cool for improv, coming up with ideas and it's just fun to play around with, to be honest. Okay, bringing you guys up close and personal for this one. We're getting serious. This is possibly my favorite piece of equipment out of anything in this studio. This is my CC one to one control surface. This little beast of a control unit can pretty much control all of my software, but with hardware. So I don't have to be playing around with a mouse and keyboard all the time, which for me is amazing. There's something I really love about the tactile feel of analog hardware. And I think we kind of lose that when we get into the digital world where everything is done with a keyboard and mouse. This thing 
is awesome. It's built specifically for Cubase, so it integrates really well with the system. You can't actually even buy this anymore. So they're actually incredibly hard to find out. As you probably know, us musicians, we love knobs. We have knobs everywhere. So a lot of software for music production is modeled off of analog hardware. And of course, all of this analog hardware has knobs. So it's great to have an actual knob to be able to caress. But seriously, it's just really good to be able to actually feel what you're doing and to actually be turning something instead of clicking on a knob that's on a screen and dragging it with your mouse. For me, it makes me feel a lot more connected to the music that I'm making. I pretty much look for any way possible to kind of break down that barrier between me and the music. I know that not everyone has the luxury of using one of these controllers for their setup, but if any of you guys do have a controller, I wanna know what you guys are actually using and how it works in your workflow. Remember, YouTube actually has a free tip button. That like button down there actually helps me out a lot and will help my video get seen by more people. So if you're enjoying the video or if you've had any good ideas from this video, please consider clicking that button. It only takes half a second and helps me out a lot. So the monitors I use are the Yamaha HS8. They're great monitors. They have good frequency response and they're also very affordable. I have these monitors sitting on top of some isoacoustics isolation stands. They basically stop any vibration coming from the speaker itself into the desk. That allows me to get a much cleaner sound straight from the speakers and kind of reduces any kind of reverb or rattle or resonance that might come from the desk itself. The isolation stands also allow me to adjust the height and the angle of the speakers so that they're correctly oriented, but also so that the height is correct for where I'm sitting. I've also invested in some room acoustics for this room. So I've got some acoustic treatment that I actually built myself. Bass traps in the two front corners, acoustic panels on the walls, one on the ceiling, one directly behind me. Basically all of the first reflection points are completely treated. And then I also have some smaller bass traps down on the floor. And of course, I can't forget my LCDX headphones. These are my go-to when I'm trying to do any kind of detailed mixing or mastering. They are absolutely amazing. The detail that I get from these headphones is mind-blowing. They are honestly completely different than anything I've ever heard before. When I put these on, I always can pick up on more details and things that I just never heard coming from the speakers. The sound quality on these is absolutely top notch and they're also amazingly comfortable to wear for really long sessions. I've actually never got uncomfortable wearing these, even on ridiculously long sessions. Now both my headphones and my speakers are connected to the ADI2 Pro. The ADI2 Pro is an absolute game changer for my audio processing. Not quite the same as an audio interface because it doesn't have inputs. It's just for taking the digital signal from inside my computer and sending it out to the speakers and to the headphones. It has things like an inbuilt EQ and even a headphone crossfeed feature, which basically allows me to more closely replicate exactly what speakers do when you're listening to them. When you're listening to speakers from your left ear, you'll hear the left speaker first, and then you'll also hear the right speaker just slightly quieter and with a tiny, tiny delay, like too small to actually notice, but your brain does pick up on that. And that's how your brain creates a sense of space. Normally with headphones in your right ear, you're only hearing the right speaker and your left ear is only hearing the left speaker. This headphone crossfeed eliminates that and gives me more of the sound stage that you would get from speakers, but the precision from headphones. The EQ function is great for both my speakers and my headphones. So I've looked up reference curves for my headphones and applied a very, very subtle correction to make them even more flat and to get the response closer to what you would get from speakers. 
And then for my speakers, I've actually measured the frequency response of this room. And then I've used the EQ built into the ADI2 Pro to correct the room resonances and get the speakers sounding more flat. So that room correction combined with the acoustic treatment that I already have set up in the room creates for an incredibly accurate listening environment. And then I have the headphones just to give me that higher detail and higher accuracy for the final steps. It lets me fine tune my sound to complete perfection. My quad capture is the backbone of my recording setup. That's what I use for recording everything. That's the interface that I plug all of my instruments into. I plug my DJ decks into that. I plug my microphones into it. All of my instruments go through this quad capture. It's probably almost 10 years old now and I've never had a problem with it. I've always been a fan of Roland Gear. I think they make high quality stuff. And yeah, this one has served me well the whole time. The microphone I use is the Shaw SM58. This is pretty much the industry standard for live music. If you've played live, you definitely would have seen one of these, at least at some point. They are really well built, they are reliable, and they're also really affordable. The keyboard and mouse that I use not only look fantastic, but they also look after my wrists and make sure that I maintain healthy posture during those long studio sessions. So the mouse that I use is the Kensington Expert. It's a trackball mouse, which is really good for your wrist. It helps to prevent any kind of repetitive stress injury and reduces a lot of the wrist movements that you would do with a normal mouse. And the keyboard that I use is the Keychron K8 Pro. The keyboard and mouse that you use are one of the most important things as a music producer because the keyboard and mouse is your first point of contact with anything on your computer. You're gonna be using your keyboard and mouse more than anything. If I'm going to be spending hours every day with my hands on these two things interacting with the computer, then I want to be doing it in the most enjoyable way possible. It may be a small thing, but I think the way the keyboard feels and the way the mouse feels can really add up when it's the most often thing that you're doing to control everything in your process. This is my DJ setup. I've got the Pioneer DDJ1000 along with my MacBook Pro, which also doubles as my music production studio when I'm on the go. And I also use my MacBook for editing these videos. So I have this set up at the back of my studio, which gives me loads of room up the front while I'm making music. And then this is basically my practice station where I do all of my DJ practice. And I also record my Instagram reels, which is a perfect opportunity to mention that you can see those reels by following me over on Instagram. The reason why I chose this DJ controller is because it has a four channel mixer. So even though it has two decks, there's a button on the deck which switches between deck one and three and deck two and four. Each of these decks is basically two decks. So it allows me to practice as if I've got a four deck setup but at a much more compact size, which is really great for actually being able to have it in my studio with all of my other gear. So this is the workhorse of my studio. This is my custom built PC. It has a Ryzen 3900X processor along with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a GTX 1060 graphics card. The graphics card is not that special because it doesn't need a good graphics card. All of the components in there are specifically chosen for music production. It's fitted out with Be Quiet fans and a Be Quiet liquid cooler to keep everything pretty low in terms of noise level. It literally handles everything I throw at it and more. So that's it guys. Thanks for hanging out in the studio with me and having a look at the space that I use and how I use the gear. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And I'll see you guys in the next one.